Welcome to this Geometry Notes course. Um, this is going to be a absolute beginner's course for Geometry Notes. And there's a lot of stuff out there at the moment, but I feel like some of them are a little bit confusing. So we're going to be approaching this from an absolute beginner's perspective. And what you see here is actually just a very, very simple demonstration of how you can use Geometry Notes. We're just going to be demonstrating the very basic concept of how to get started, like understanding a group input, a group output, um, how this is kind of like a modifier. And then we'll progressively move towards um, in this multi-part series to more complicated topics. So this is gonna be part one of this um, series. Part two, we'll be looking at the set position and so on. And even as somebody who really is intimidated by geometry notes, you will eventually with this course that I'm putting on YouTube, grow and learn the basics. So I'm approaching this in a way where hopefully you won't get overwhelmed. I think if I take one concept at a time, break it down and then eventually build on those concepts, the hope is that you as a beginner, somebody who doesn't know much about geometry notes, can really start to understand it and see how you can make something cool of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this multi-part course that I'm gonna be uploading to YouTube and um, that it introduces you to geometry, note, geometry nodes in a very practical way. So let's jump into part one, where we start learning the very basics. So we're gonna be looking at the very basics to get started with. So let's select our default cube. And I'm gonna show you a few things in a second related to the objects we can start with. But for now, let's just go over here to this geometry nodes workspace. And um, here you can see um, we have these three windows. We have our 3D view, which has our cube here. We have this thing over here where we can evaluate things like our position, our edge. This is essentially our index information here. Um, we're not gonna get too much into that at the moment. That'll be something we cover later on. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and hover over this and just drag it. And so for now, we're just gonna be focusing on the very basics. So we need to understand that geometry nodes in many ways is like a modifier, but it gives you more of the control. In fact, if you go over with a object selected, if you go over to your modifiers, you can actually add a GeoNodes modifier by going add modifier. And then over here, you should actually see it says GeoNodes. It's actually one of the main things that comes up. Or you can just go search here and type in Geo and it comes up with GeoNodes. But realistically, you'll just come over here and click new and it does the exact same thing. Now, when you create a new geometry node system, it comes up with two things here. It comes up with a group input and a group output. So essentially the group output is what you're seeing here over now. And because this um, group input is the actual object, the input is the output. So it's a cube is the input, so the output is the cube and that's what you're seeing. That seems kind of obvious, but if you were to come over here now and you go shift A in this window and you go search, and let's for example type in sphere, you get a UV sphere and you place it on this cable here so the mesh is going into the geometry, all of a sudden our cube over here, and you can actually see in the scene collection that is indeed the cube, is now having a group output that is a sphere. So now we've taken the group input, which is our cube, and this is no longer um, feeding into our output. That's why we're not seeing it. So this is kind of the cool thing about geometry nodes, because you can actually, in fact, I'm gonna demonstrate here in this 3D view. We're gonna go shift A. Let's just go to our mesh options, add in the monkey head. And in our front view, let's just move it over onto the side. And with this monkey head, you can either go and create a new geometry node system, or if you wanna share that geometry node system over here. In fact, let's just come and click on that cube and let's just come here and name it, um, let's just call it test one. So we can click on the monkey here and we can go over here and create a new geometry node system. And we can come to the drop down, and we can actually share that test one. So now, even though it says over here in our scene collection on the outliner, it says Suzanne, which is the monkey head, yet what are we seeing? We're seeing the UV sphere. And you can now essentially create a complex node network in this test one that we've named here. You can add all sorts of things, you can make anything, and at any point you can grab any object in Blender and give it those properties. Um, or that geometry node system, so you can do the same sort of network on that object. Now, one cool thing as well is whatever you do in here in the node network, you could always take your original mesh and plug that in to the output. So for example, you can take this cube that is actually a cube and you can come in here and for example, go shift A, search, and maybe get a transform. So transform geometry, this is a very simple node for beginners to start with because it really already deals with concepts that you're already familiar with 
as a Blender user. For example, we've got the X, Y, and the Z um, components here. We show the directions in our 3D space. So you can probably already figure this out. If we take this transform geometry and we come here to the, for example, the translation, which is where it is located in the 3D space. Um, if you come here to the X and you move it up by one meter by tapping in one, um, we're not surprised to see here that it's moved up one meter on the X, right? And you can come here and slide that like so. Um, and as you can come over here, you can see that we can come take the Z here and move it up on the Z. So this is a great beginner node because it kind of lets you see over here how this is working. You're taking the thing that comes in, the input, you're doing something to it and it's spitting it back out into the group output, right? And it's actually happening to the monkey here too because if we click on the monkey, it's sharing that test one. So it's saying we're taking the monkey input, the monkey is having the transform geometry done to it, and we're seeing it in the 3D space because it's going to the group output. So this is, um, in a nutshell, what geometry nodes allows us to do. Now, this is obviously a very, very simple explanation. Um, there are very, very complex networks we can build, but really one way you can sum this up to really understand that is we're making our own modifier. We're creating a system here that can do things procedurally to a piece of mesh or a curve and it's very powerful. So let's actually do something with this now. I'm gonna actually select the monkey head and just press delete. I'm gonna select the cube and I'm just gonna get the transform geometry here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and holding it, I'm gonna press control X and it'll just get rid of it without disconnecting the cable. Now over here, we still have our UV sphere. So instead of working with the cube here, let's go ahead and just place the UV sphere on here. So the mesh is going to the geometry and we'll take this group out input and move it over. So now we're gonna do something with this sphere. In fact, we're gonna do a few things. So let's start by going Shift A and let's go search and let's type in something you'll all be familiar with. So we're gonna type in extrude. So let's type in X and go extrude mesh. Let's place it on this cable. So the UV um, sphere is going into the mesh here. And you'll actually notice here that this is this greenish color. And the reason it goes into the mesh here because it is compatible with that. So this also has a greenish color. So this green lines in Blender geometry nodes is gonna be our geometries that we're working with. So if I were to take this mesh output and plug it into, for example, the selection, it turns red because that is not compatible. If I plug it into the offset here, um, that sort of purple here is a vector math input. So that's not compatible either. If I take the mesh and plug it into the offset, it's not compatible. It's not compatible with any one of these and that's why we have these red lines, okay? So that's something you're gonna notice a lot. So I can take the UV map here, I can plug the purple square into the purple square here, and it'll allow that because it's compatible. So that's also a very straightforward concept to get around. Obviously, you might not understand what these things mean yet, that's fine. Um, don't worry about that too much, but I'm just letting you know how we plug things in. So this is now extruding every face. So if you come here, you can turn off individual. So now, if we go, um, you're obviously not gonna notice anything because it's extruding every face equally. But if we were to maybe turn individual back on again, so you see, you see it's extruding every individual face, we can come here and decrease this amount, to make it something like this. And now let's say we wanna smooth this out. We can move up and now we can go shift A search and we can get a sub. Let's get a subdivision surface. Don't confuse it with the subdivide mesh. Just get a subdivision surface modifier. Place it on here and now it is um, doing a subdivision surface modifier operation here. So we can go and bump up the levels. And you'll notice if we actually right click and go shade smooth, it's not gonna work. Because in geometry nodes, everything has to be controlled with the node. So we're gonna move up a bit. We're gonna go shift A, search, and we're gonna get a set. And then we're gonna type in space. And then we're gonna type in smooth. And we're gonna go set shade smooth and place it over here. And now we have some nice smooth shading happening here. So now we have a system here that we've created. We, instead of having a whole bunch of modifiers here, we have now just this one geometry node modifier that we've created that can do this operation here to something. So we can easily now go and quickly add in Suzanne into the scene here. So let's grab the monkey head, move her over, come to new over here, come to the drop down, and let's get that test one. And um, yeah, in this case, obviously, it's gonna start as a sphere, but what we can do here is we can actually come and we can click here on this little two and now it's gonna be test 1001. Let's just call it test two. And now we can take our group input and plug that into the mesh. So now Suzanne has that happening 
um, instead of the sphere. So now we can come here to this extrude, we can lower that, and now we're creating this cool effect here. And now this is a very simple demonstration. Um, you could probably just do this over here in the modifiers, but there are gonna be a lot more complicated things that you could actually do. So now I'm gonna go ahead and let's just grab the sphere where we have test one. I'm gonna demonstrate one more thing, which I think is really cool. So let's say for example, you wanted to reuse this UV sphere, right? So you can either do it one of two ways. You can go Shift D to duplicate this UV sphere. Then over here on the group output, you're probably wondering, well, how are we gonna have just a normal UV sphere and the modified UV sphere, right? That is where we have something very powerful in geometry nodes. It's one that you're gonna use a lot of time and that's called a join geometry. So we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go to search, we're gonna type in join and just be very careful here because when I first started with geometry nodes and a lot of people I know who are very professional at this made the same mistake, um, it's so easy to keep accidentally clicking on join strings, um, but just always remember if you're a beginner that it shouldn't be blue. It's not the join strings. Don't get those two mixed up. It's shift A, search and get a join and get the join geometry. A lot of beginners make that mistake, um, but it obviously seems obvious now that I've done this for a while. So we're gonna go and place the join geometry right over here. So we have this output from our modification. So kind of look at this, whole thing over here as a modification. The extrude, the subdivision surface, and the set um, shade smooth, right? And then we've got the UV sphere over here that we've duplicated. We can now take that fresh one and join it in here. Now, you're actually not seeing it, but it's actually inside of there. So what we can do, we can take this UV sphere, we can go Shift A, search and get a transform, and get a transform geometry and place it over here. Let's just come here on the Z and just move it up till it's sitting on top of here. But what's even cooler, we can actually take this UV sphere over here. We don't need to even duplicate another UV sphere. We can just go ahead and take the same output and put it into here, or the same input of the UV sphere. So now we literally have the exact same UV sphere that's going to this join geometry. So in a way, this is the exact same UV sphere, but the only difference is the one in the top input has this happening to it over here. And the thing that's really cool is if I wanted to, I could actually come here and grab this extrude mesh, the subdivision surface and the set smooth, just select them. Then you can hit control G and so control G or command G. And now this is its own little node package with a group input and group output. So you can actually press tab to go out. And now this thing is its own little modifier package. So if I wanted to, I could actually grab it and press M to mute it. So now you can't see that effect. And I can press M again to bring it back. And I can even go ahead and go Shift D to duplicate it and place it over here. So now both of these have this. So just like this, using just one little UV sphere here, we've done this over here. How cool is that? So I'm gonna grab this guy here and just get rid of it. So now we are really starting to understand how this works. And you could keep going. You could come over here, Shift D with this join geometry, create another one, take the same UV sphere, plug it into this join, and then you can grab your um, transform geometry, shift D to duplicate, place it over here. And now let's maybe move it over on the X. So how cool is that? And the thing that's even better is we can actually come here to the segments and maybe make it something like 24 over here. And now it updates in all of those at the same time. Same with the rings here. I can take the rings and make it 12. How cool is that? And I'm just gonna show you one more thing. If you ever wanna cut cables together, you can actually hold and shift and right click and just drag through them. And now this mesh input becomes several different points here. But this isn't critical to understand as a beginner. This is more just when you're gonna get more into like being really organized with your scene. Um, just having the ability to cut cables together would be kind of handy. But that's not 100% relevant to geometry nodes when you're first getting started. That's just kind of something you'll see me do every now and then but it's not 100% essential, okay? So I hope that this has been a handy tutorial and uh, definitely check out part two. We're gonna start getting into the set position. The set position node essentially allows us to manipulate our mesh. Um, whoop, let me grab it here. The set position node essentially allows us to start doing things with our mesh, so like manipulate it and distort it. And it's gonna be a very, very commonly used node as you progress with geometry nodes. So I'll see you guys in the next part. Thank you for watching and enjoy.